I think before we even get to the conversation about universal income or other programs to try to make the adjustment to the economic restructuring easier, there's an underlying assumption that is inherently false here, which is that automation will lead to mass unemployment. Right. And that is not correct because we can all say, you know, the prediction is that you know, millions of jobs worldwide, 400 million, 800 million are going to be lost to automation. But how many more will be created? We have no idea, actually. And in fact, if we look at every technological revolution, we saw more, far more jobs created or people transitioning into a different industry uh, versus just mass unemployment. You know what? Modern democracies in the West are dying out. And in fact, what we're likely to face in the next 20, 25 years is not going to happen in five years is we're not going to have enough people to fill those jobs. And that's already happening. Look at that employment rate in the United States. Um, look at some of the small businesses in places uh, that are agricultural, like Idaho, um, Ohio. They're actually complaining because they can't find workers. Right? Let, let me, this let is me, the new Andrew reality. Keen, wants, your partner, wants to yeah. join you. Can you yield to the floor? Uh, Thanks. Yeah, I, I want to reiterate w w what Alina is saying. Um, the reality of the, the AI revolution, it will create new scarcities. Machines can't develop empathy. Machines aren't creative. Machines can't think for themselves. So it actually could conceivably, not inevitably, because that's the problematic word in this conversation. But this revolution could potentially enable a second or third renaissance. It's just as likely, not inevitable, but possible. But I want to come back to something that Yasher is saying, because he's falling in to the very trap that I warned you about. He's presenting technology and monopolies as inevitable. He's talking about winner-take-all technology companies. They're going to control everything. They're going to compound inequality. What Yasha is forgetting is politics. He's forgetting democracy. Look what's going on in Europe. Margaret Vestager, the EU commissioner of antitrust, is fighting Apple, fighting Google, fighting Facebook. Who do you the think Germ will win? Who do you think will win? She just fined Apple $12 billion. Google is now under three antitrust investigations. Now, the problem in America is that the political system is paralyzed, but that's got nothing to do with this bigger issue. That Ian is suggesting, uh, sorry, uh, Yash is suggesting we essentially lie back and think of Silicon Valley and just assume, assume it's inevitable and there's nothing we can do. We can do stuff as consumers, as entrepreneurs, as citizens, and politics is the answer. It's not the problem. But These guys present politics as the problem. It's the solution. It always has been, and it always will be. Let's let Ian Bremer respond to that. Well, I, I, um, I, I certainly would not suggest we lie back and allow, China, allow the Silicon Valley that they're going to win, because it's not necessarily Silicon Valley. Right now, it's either Silicon Valley or it's China. Uh, those are the drivers of automation. Uh, when you asked who's going to win in Europe, it's not going to be the Europeans. I don't know if it'll be Silicon Valley or the Chinese. That's a really interesting question. But let's keep in mind that in China, AI is driven by the state, the political system. In the United States, it is not. It's driven by corporations. In other words, at no point are the political systems, the liberal democracies, actually driving AI. That's a problem. They don't understand it. In the United States, we wouldn't know how to regulate it. Did you see Mark Zuckerberg trying to explain to senators what a Facebook was? <laughs> Did you guys see that, right? Uh, do not count on these people to be effective arbiters and umpires. But there's <laughs> one. OK, I yield my time to applause. But there's one other point I wanted to make, um, which is no one, everyone keeps talking about the automation point of jobs. No one else has picked up on the point of what automation and AI is doing to information consumption. And we all have one of these. Maybe there's one 95-year-old person in the back that doesn't. The rest of us do. We spend way too much time on them. We're doing an incredible social experiment right now. We're giving to all of our kids. We're saying, here, use this to connect with absolutely everybody. Let's see what happens in 20 years. Within five, it's going to be virtual, all right? It's going to be augmented reality. It's going to be completely immersive. In the United States, controlled, those filters, by corporations that want to make money. In China, controlled by the government. Again, automation and AI 
crashing liberal democracy. And I don't see us doing anything to stop our kids from having those 24-7 in 10 years' time. I don't see how that isn't profoundly disturbing to at least the model of government that we've had right, over me, our lives.